Welcome to the Butterfly Effect Stage 9 2020 Tour de France. Today, what an exciting stage we had all the way from start to finish. The very first climb, big explosions. Well, hell, we'll go back be before the first climb and just talk about the start. All the different tacks going up the road, coming back, next break goes, coming back, then a break again, coming back. And then finally, we get to the first big climb of the stage and the break goes, then Mark Hershey bridges across and just decimates the break and goes solo. What an effort he had to put out to go on his own today, but it was a perfect stage for really a solo break of a strong rider like himself. Dropping the break, he had the advantage of the wet and dangerous foggy descents to gain time where of course Jumbo Visma would have to back off a little bit, stay at the front, but stay safe, keep the pace where you're not losing much time and the stage win's still possible, but your eye really, their main objective really had to be trying to take the yellow jersey before we go into the rest day. And of course the next two, if not three stages won't be GC stages, so now you're talking about a four or five window gap and a time and place when the Tour de France could end tomorrow or the next day, we don't know. So if you're Jumbo Visma and you come into a team, you come into Tour de France with a team like theirs, you gotta believe they want the yellow jersey now because it's time to get down to business and show the world how good they are. So when we started the first climb, you see the break get established and it's total chaos behind in the field. Literally 10, 15 different groups all over the place. And this is when I would really like to praise the whole Yumbo Visma squad. They form together, they start setting a steady pace and they just bring all the chaos roped back in, now is controlled under the Yumbo Visma train. And so what we had seen at Dauphiné on the last stage of Dauphiné when Thibaut Pino was the race leader after Primoz Roglic dropped out from crashing, it was total chaos on that stage. And as I was watching today's stage, I was thinking, wow, this could really turn into the last stage of Dauphiné again where it was every man for himself and last guy throwing punches survives and wins the stage and possibly even takes the yellow jersey. Instead, Jumbo Visma, even after their race the day before where I said there were some holes in their tactics, now they brought the band back together, they set the pace, controlled it, got rid of the chaos. Then when they started the Col de Mary Blanc, they were back in control again Walt Van Aert on the front, destroying the field with Guess Inc. Those two guys did damage. And then we see the young American who had a bad day yesterday, Seth Kuss, getting on the front. He's back at his best again and destroying this year's Tour de France. What I really liked about the moment, though, was not only had Seth shown that yesterday was just a youth reason for why I believe anyways I had tweeted with him earlier and where he I had set out there and asked him if it was more about calories and he tweeted back to me and he said yes it was about calories and a little bit of hard work on the flat stage before yesterday's stage so today when I after I received that tweet when I saw him pulling you really got to see that yes it was more calories than energy spent lack thereof calories anyways than energy spent and now he's back at his best driving on the front with the best riders in the Tour de France and setting a pace to make it where guys are getting fatigued fast but when you really look at the tactics of Jumbo Visma they rolled from start to finish all the way to the Col de Mary Blanc perfect they go up the Col de Mary Blanc and Primoz Roglic just waits and you've got to understand what's coming when you have today Pogacar riding as good as he is that you gotta believe you let Pogacar do the first attack as Primoz did 
followed the attack, and basically those guys set the tempo up the last climb of today's stage, going over the top. And of course, Egon Bernal came back up from yesterday's level. We lost Nairo Quintana, lost a little bit of form and dropped back to the next group. But that front group of four was really strong. Tadej Pogaccia, a small air when he's going for the time bonuses to look to his right and not think about looking left. Almost crashed and changed his whole Tour de France. Could you imagine what we may have missed in the coming stages had Pogaccia not saved that overlap of wheels for the sprint time bonuses? Thank God he pulled it out, right? So as those four come down, Mark Hershey did an amazing job. I think his tactics were perfect to sit up at the last minute and try to win the sprint. And he put in a valiant effort there to get it. Pogacar wins the stage. So when you really dissect today's stage, tactically wise, I thought everybody rode perfect. Yumbo Visma was fantastic. So what I really like to talk about now is when you're dealing with a rider like Seth Kuss of that age, and I mean any rider, I just threw his name out there. It's irrelevant whose names you use, but of course with Seth's loss of form yesterday and his form coming back today, that's really the topic. That's the butterfly effect of how important it is on every stage of the Tour de France to be eating directly when the stage starts, a stage like today on stage nine, when you have the two massive climbs coming from the middle and at the end of the stage, that very beginning part when all the attacks were coming is your only real window of opportunity to get in massive amount of calories. So you have to get those calories in there in at that moment before the first climb starts. Otherwise, you're going to be at a deficit that you can just never recover from because you're not going to be able to eat on the first big climb with a team like Yumbo Visma right in the front. And so for the young kids, this video is more gonna be for them. It's really important to remember that it's a day-to-day -day effort to just watch the amount of calories and rest and recover that you're getting between each stage. When I was young and racing through the domestic scene, I would have these up and down flows just like we saw with Sepp. And really what I saw and what I could write down in a diary was that it was just lack of calories most of the time. That was either at night at dinner time or someplace lost in the race where I didn't eat enough then. And what it almost 90% came down to was the first part of the race. I felt so good and the legs were riding so strong that you just don't even think about the need to eat. And that is where you're gonna have problems later in the stage. When I'm doing my coaching with Linton Horner coaching, I always tell my athletes, because they're all nine to five, like most of you watching this video, they all have nine to five jobs. They're working Monday through Friday. They got kids on the weekend. They're trying to ride at 6 a.m., but they're trying to get home by 2 p.m. because they got kids sports. And so the most important thing is when you don't have form and when you're racing at something like the Tour de France, they go together, is you have to always be eating when you're at the Tour de France. And when you're a nine to five guy working who normally is training two hours a day, maybe you only get an hour Tuesday and Thursday. And so when you get to the weekend and now you're doing the big weekend group ride, the most important thing is you have to eat a good meal the night before your big ride. You have to eat something in the morning and you absolutely have to continue the calories through your bike ride. And when you look at Sep Kuss, when I was watching him yesterday in stage eight, what came to mind is there's no way a rider with his ability riding that good can drop off and form that much from one day to the next. It has to be calories. And when he tweeted me this morning before the stage started, uh, that's exactly what he said. Hey Chris, I just didn't get enough calories in. It might have had something to do with the crosswind stage too, but basically he was telling me that it's calories. And today, 
He got the calories right. He's back on the front, riding exceptional. But it's just something to keep in mind when you're young. You gotta watch the food, it's really important. And of course, when you're an amateur cyclist and you're doing your big ride on the weekend, you gotta pay attention to the calories the night before at dinner, that morning, and do not stop paying attention to the calories while you're on your bike ride also. Hope you enjoyed the butterfly effect today. Hope my tips for your training can help you out in the future. See you real soon.